Welcome back, guys, to Reinvented. Sorry, my camera is acting up today. It's okay. Um, but welcome back. So today, I was like, we're going to look at how does mental effect, mental health affect sports. Um, but before we do that, I kind of want to talk to you guys. So I also, I feel like I kind of update you when I don't have guests on the show. I kind of update you on, like, what I'm doing. So, obviously, yes, I'm still writing my book. It's like, no, we're near done. Um, I have finished at least a majority of my little short film. Majority of it is finished. Super excited. Um, obviously, still in the works. And then, I didn't know if... If anyone saw my Instagram post or I even did a TikTok post about it, but uh, Laugh and Love merch is back up. Links are definitely in my Instagram bio because TikTok doesn't let me. Um, but these are for people. All proceeds go to people affected by narcissistic abuse. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think that's really all I've got for you guys. That's all I've got. But now we're going to get into the actual part of this here. How does mental health affect athletic sports performance? And I, I kind of thought of this one because obviously I play sports and I've always talked about how, how important your mental health is for when you play sports. Um, and that's kind of what Fun Kicks is definitely about is showing you um, just kind of like the mental side of things. So, yeah. Alright, so, how does mental health affect athletic sports for me? So, yeah. Um, negative effects of competitive, of competitive sports on mental health and both used and elite levels. So, this is not just one group or the other. It is literally um, Anyone. All right. So we're going to explore how common mental health conditions, stress, anxiety, depression, gambling addiction, gaming disorder, PTSD, and eating disorders can impact athletic performance and where to get specialist treatment. Or at least for the most part, just kind of go over it. Um, Because any, any like mental health, it doesn't. Sometimes you never know what someone's going through. All right. Common mental health conditions that affect athletic sports forms as where to get immediate counseling. So stress. So due to conflicting demands, athletes can neglect stress management and self-care practices to focus on their sports commitment. And I've also seen like a lot of professional athletes talk about this too. Um, and some of like even like the biggest names, they'll talk about how important it is, you know, they they do what what's best for them and their self care, because at the end of the day, you are important and you are the one, um, you know, gonna be you're gonna be the one benefiting from it. All right. So it says, stress can affect athletic performance in a number of ways. The stress caused by pressure of competing can impact sleep quality and quantity. You know, I will say definitely when playing sports, too. Sometimes after, like, a big, um, you know, like a game or even a meet, I will say definitely the adrenaline is high. Sometimes it might make that a little harder. And especially, like... And that kind of goes for anything, too. Like, you know, because you're always, like, thinking about it after the fact. Like, you're either thinking, like, oh, what could I have done better? You know, or, oh, that was awesome. Stuff like that. All right. And stress can also reduce focus and increase much muscle tension, thus predisposing athletes to injury and sports industry, in, in, injury. Injury. Is a significant stressor in itself. Um, yeah, because definitely, I don't know if anyone's ever had this, 
but where you get super stressed out and your muscles just tense up and then you're just like, come on, going like this. I had that happen to me one time with my hand. It was horrible. I couldn't move it. I had to like, I had to be told I had to like, you know, unstress myself. So, um, I stuff like that too. And it also like during rehabilitation, like, you know, physical therapy, injured athletes can experience isolation, anxiety, depression, and fear of reoccurring injury or being dropped from the team. And that is definitely a big fear in athletes too, because you, of course, you don't want to get injured, but it, it is kind of lonely because it's not like, and what I also feel like there's got to be like something people can do when it comes to that, because it shouldn't be a lonely process. Like I know it, it feels like one, but it shouldn't be a lonely process. So, um, and definitely, I don't, I, I'm not thinking it's so much like being like a threat of being dropped from the team. I think it's more of like, am I going to be able to get back to where I was at? Kind of thing. All right. Anxiety. Performance anxiety is common in sport. It is a normal reaction to the pressure of competing. Now, I will say that performance anxiety is definitely very real. Like, I understand pe- people are telling me, oh, well, you only, like, play recreational soccer. Okay, it's more of, like, for me, it has to do with, like, it had to do with, like, a lot of meeting new people I had never met before, didn't know these people. Um, so, yeah. And also, like, at the time, you know, it's something I, like, I really want to impress them. So, like, also, it's, like, even even when I did track, too, it was, I know, like, I wasn't, like, the best athlete out there, but I definitely wanted to do my best, and I was, you know, I was also, like, kind of fighting my own mental health struggles at the time, so, yeah. And also, like, to some extent, it can help athletes focus their energy and attention on the mat, the game or match. Now... <laughs> I think I definitely, like, I did have performance anxiety, especially when I did track. But uh, what I always did, and I'll give you guys one example. So I transferred high schools after my sophomore year of high school. So I went to two different high schools. But I did track my first, or I did track eighth grade through sophomore year. Um, And for unforeseen circumstances, I didn't do track the last two years. So sorry if... um. I just point anyone with that, but uh, I ended up like I made it a goal in my head because it was the last track meet, and we did. We had I think it was JV districts, and because again, I wasn't a very good athlete, so <laughs> wasn't it wasn't a very good athlete. There was like I didn't. I went to. Um, Yeah, I went, I went to JV District and I helped him out of varsity districts. I think that's how that went that year. I didn't think about that one for a minute. But I remember telling myself, I was like, let's have a great track. And of course, I was nervous as shit. Like, I did not do very good, very well in long jump. And I had struggled with long jump for so, after eighth grade. Like, I could not hit that line to save my fucking life. Now, I don't know, like, what how how I got stuck in my own head like what I did because um like in eighth grade I could hit it like that but it, once I had freshman year I just could not get on my own head so I I realize that now I didn't realize it back then but I remember I'm like let's have a good track meet let's end this season you know with this team on a good note and I did Although, I then made my Instagram post. And it made it really awkward because I had to go, I had to see them, like, the next week. (laughs) But, I I think they still like me. Because, you know, I think. Please don't hate me. I just, I really didn't know how to tell anyone that. But I did love, I did love doing track. I do remember that, so. Little stupid story I got there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, I should stop talking about that one now. 
All right, depression. So depression can affect an athlete's ability to function in several ways. Um, when getting out of bed and completing basic daily tasks becomes a major struggle. Yes. I mean, like, sometimes I have to, you have to, like, force yourself to get up. Um, so. That's something that, like, even nowadays I still struggle with. Showing up for training and competitions can seem like an, in, you know, just a challenge. I'm not saying that big word. My brain hurts too much for that right now. But, uh, yeah, sometimes it was, like, even... Even when I started playing recreational soccer, too, I will say it got hard. It got hard. It did get kind of hard. Um, okay. A well balanced diet. I cannot talk to you guys. A well balanced diet is important for athletic performance and inadequate or excessive calories and nutrition can take a significant toll. Loss of interest in activities is another symptom of depression. Athletes who are not interested in their sport do not perform well. Well, and I think a lot of um, it, you know, a lot of it could boil down to depression too, but a lot of it's also like peer pressure and, you know, just kind of family pressures to be like, you know, to like your sport that you just like it so much. So, and then of course you're not going to. And then, yeah, of course, you're not gonna like uh, perform the best. And those suffering from depression can also experience just disrupted sleep patterns, which, like, even now, I still experience too. Um, but definitely, I think in high school, I definitely had some weird sleep patterns. All right, athletes need to be well rested. To have the energy and focus to perform. I will say I didn't learn this until I started working two jobs, but yeah, you definitely need like the focus to like to perform the best. And there are physical effects of depression, aches, pains, and cramps that can make training and competing difficult. And is it depression is a part particularly dangerous mental health condition? Because if left untreated, can escalate to suicidal thoughts and attempts. So, yeah. All right. Gambling, addiction, and gaming disorder. All right. This one I'm not as familiar with, but we'll go through it. As those affected become increasingly consumed by gambling and gaming, they will have less and less time to dedicate to sports and practice competitions. And... I mean, yeah, I guess that's true, but, like, is it because they don't like their, you know, their sport, or they don't really explain in this part? Um, this will quickly impact their performance and potentially create conflicts with teammates and coaches and cause coexisting mental health problems such as stress, anxiety, and depression. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can see that part where, you know, they're obviously putting more time into something else and they're not putting in the time they're, you know, into their sport, but it can be kind of frustrating. But I will also say, though, if you if you notice that, like, from for a coach or even, like, teammates, if you notice that from someone who's, you know, gambling or gaming, you know, too much, and they're, like, or, and, and you know they love the sport, I would say have a talk with them. Maybe not be problematic. You know, take the problematic approach to it. Like, if any coaches are out there watching this, like, I would say not to get mad at them. As I don't think that's, I, that doesn't seem very helpful. Like, I would say even just from, like, a depression standpoint or, like, any type of standpoint, like, even if you're working, if you get, if someone gets mad at you and you, like, they don't know the full story, I think that would make me mad. Like, because I don't like when people try to tell me my life think they know my life better than I I would know it. So yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, and I guess like well, I guess it leads to financial problems and worrying, anxiety. I think a lot of that comes comes down to like the depression, anxiety again. Though, and I mean, it, I I do agree, gambling is a problem, but I do think if you're gonna take an approach to that and ask someone, even even if they have depression, anxiety, have a talk with them. Don't be rude about it. Don't you know? Don't expect to know their life when you don't. All right, let's see. PTSD. Classes can be affected by traumatic experiences that have occurred in, at any time in their lives, and these trigger post-traumatic stress disorder. Within the sports environment, injuries are one type of traumatic event that cause PTSD. Yeah, I would definitely say, like, even though I haven't injured myself so bad, I am always, I will say, like, the last, when, this last season I was playing soccer, I will say I was so worried to play, like, as a, as a defender again because of the fact of the last time I did I injured myself like again I know that's not like people are going to be like well that's not the severity that they mean but I'm going to relate to it how I know how to relate to it and sometimes that's you know that's kind of how that works um Trauma affects performance in many ways. Athletes may have flashbacks, nightmares, or distressing thoughts, which can feel like they like, feel like reliving the traumatic experience. Um, this can impact their ability to focus and perform the best of their abilities. Uh, athletes also may experience avo avoidance and where they can stay with people or places that remind them of their trauma. Yeah, and that does kind of all true. Like not exact, mine's not exactly from a sports related, but. I, I do like seeing them where they want to stay away from that. This may help. This may limit where they, where they are prepared to go and what activities they are willing to take part in. So yeah, people suffering from PTSD can also have negative thoughts and angry outbursts, which may affect their relationship with teammates and coaches and have trouble sleeping and concentrating. I will say, again, this also goes to the gambling one. If you are a coach or any teammate and you have the concerns about someone, and I, I will say if you're a teammate, I would go say to coach, like to your coach, say, hey, um, I think I'm not like I wouldn't say I, I think there's something wrong with this person, but I would say like, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm concerned about this person. So yeah, and without treatment, PTSD can significantly significantly affect their emotional well being and athletic performance. Yes, because again, mental and emotional, they all play a part. All right, eating disorders, including, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to read all the eating disorders, but, but they are serious mental illness, which disproportionately affect athletes. The negative effects or impacts of eating disorders on sports performance are far reaching. Athletes who are not fueled properly are, in, are unable to perform all other energy exponent. Is their energy? They don't have the energy. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really trying to. They may experience fatigue, struggle to concentrate, and have impaired judgment. Another consequence of eating disorders is an increased risk of sports injury and not healing injuries due to low bone density and malnourishment. Obviously, there's a lot of um, you know, things to go wrong with, not to go wrong, but there's a lot of things associated with eating disorders, um, that I definitely, like, I don't think I've ever known anyone with an eating disorder, um, but I'm gonna kind of relate to it through, like, just things I've experienced, you know, in my life, um, but, I mean, I've definitely had, obviously, growing up, my problems with, you know, my weight and all that stuff. Um, but, like, I know it's not to the extent of this, like, to, to eating disorders. Um, but I've always, but, like, for me, I know, like, even now, kind of looking back, like, I don't perform my best when my body's not at its best. Um. Like, even, like, when, you know, I get, like, when my body acts up, 
But like I just I you I know that it's not to the extent that I I really try to relate to things, you know, with my personal experiences to like to make conversation. But like that one that one's a hard one to do because I know that it's not. You know, I know that they're not the same thing. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that is pretty much all I've got for you guys um, today for Reinvented. I also do hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode. Um, if you haven't checked that out, I will go check it out. Um, but, yeah, until next week, guys. Peace. <laughs>